It says it is recorded. Is this for the online students? Yes. Okay. He's missing out. She. She's missing out on the phone. Well, I'll get my stuff together eventually. All right, we got up to um, to Herod last time. So let's go quickly through where we've been. We talked about when Jesus lived. Going on. Go through these, we'll get to one that has everything. Okay, so if you're looking at the, um, the history of the Jewish nation, because the entire context of the life of Christ is within Judaism, and you're looking at their history and the, um, the union of the concepts of the nation of Israel and God's chosen people. Well, as a nation, they've been promised through prophets over and over. After you're punished in the captivity, Israel will rise again, and it didn't. Except this little brief period under the Maccabees, and that didn't last. So, with all of these, when we get down to the life of Christ, you're dealing with Herod, his heirs, but also Roman officials. Uh, this is a close-up of that, so that during the ministry of Christ, Pilate, a Roman, is the governor of Judea, which of course includes Jerusalem. There's no Jewish representative that, that is a high-ranking official. Up in Galilee, where Jesus lived, Agrippa, the grandson of Herod the Great, is named the, I think he was named Ethnarch. They were real careful with what they would or wouldn't title people. But everybody called him King Herod. Well, at least in the Bible they do. And then his half-brother, I think it's half-brother, Philip, had an area to the northeast. Jesus goes there once or twice, but it's really not, doesn't figure that much in the Bible. But then you have this uh, sequence. And in a minute, I'm going to ask if you remember why I'm emphasizing this so much. All right, this is the whole life of Christ. And as we said, maybe a couple of years, Herod the Great is there. But he, his shadow looms very large over the history of the period of Christ. His heirs are here, but the one who gets the biggest part uh, gets kicked out real quick. So you have the reign of Herod the Great, which had been a very long time. I, it'd be like my parents remembered uh, FDR. He was in office forever. I must have had, I don't know, five or six terms till he died or something like that before they put in term limits. So they would have remembered Herod the Great, but then uh, Herod Antipas, not Ethnarch, Tetrarch, is, um, he lasts a long time after Jesus, from before Jesus to, well, from the, shortly after Jesus was born until a after he dies. Uh, Archelaus was, and we're gonna look at the horrible um, passing on of, of, of the title of today. Uh, he only lasted two years, and everybody hated him, and the Romans kicked him out. I think he had to go to Gaul, which would be like Spain, France, and he was banished. That's when the different governors took over. And uh, Philip the Tetrarch continues to exercise his authority. But the Romans come in, of whom the one significant to us, of course, is Pontius Pilate. And we talked about the concept of who the people of God are. You have to start with the Israelite, Hebrew, Jewish concept, because that's our context, before you can transfer it over to the Christian concept. And we talked about that different periods use the titles in different ways, Hebrews, Israelites, and Jews. But then we talked about, are we talking about a kingdom? Are we talking about a nation or a province? The nation of the Jews has been dispersed for many thousands of years. And there is a Jewish nation. Today there is a Jewish country, or an Israel that is a country, but they're really not to be confused. But at the time in, in between, this was just a province, first of Babylon, and then of Persia, and then of Greece, well, no, Greece and Persia. Yes. Gre Persia, then Greece. Persia, Greece. And then Rome. So, they thought of themselves as the kingdom of Israel, but it was, a, uh, it was a, a thing of the past. It's like being a part of the great British Empire. 
not, not so great anymore if you're talking about how many, how many you've got. So when Jesus comes preaching the kingdom, and that's why that's I wanted you to hook on this thing about Herod. Jesus comes preaching the kingdom. It's something different than the nation of Israel. And you know the Bible, the New Testament speaks of, of the church as spiritual Israel. So that's such a dramatic difference that we need to keep looking for what does king mean. And what we're looking for in the historical context today is how, what a contrast there is between Herod the king of the Jews at the first of the Gospels and Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews on the cross at the end of the... The contrast between those two. Right. If you wanted to show how the spiritual king is a better thing to have than the earthly king, let's contrast Herod the Great and Jesus. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. I had a Greek teacher, my first Greek teacher, said that he believes that when, is it in Galatians, where it says at the right time Christ died, yeah. or, or in the fullness of time Christ came, he says he thinks part of it was the condition of the world at the time. He was talking about the Greek language to enable the spreading of the word. Mm -hmm. But I think there's something too. Here's a chance where God's people can pick up the mission they've neglected of reaching outside themselves. But it won't be through the kind of king they had. So we're going to skip over this part because I'm sure you've memorized that. You could answer all the questions about those on your test, right? Yeah. I thought so. Ooh, go with it. Speak go with for it. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know ahead of time which things I might test on. All right. All right. The map on the left, the outside line, the one that comes to a V at the bottom, mm -hmm. is the modern nation of Israel. Try to ignore the white sections for a minute. In the very middle of the map is the Dead Sea. Mm -hmm with the Jordan River going up to the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. Well, today's Israel, I remember when they got uh, the Sinai from Egypt and then went back to Israel and back forth. It's a big desert, so it's not a big deal. But um, whether that's included as Israel's or not is an important element in international affairs even today. And you know, you said you visited. If you're crossing from the Jewish-Israeli controlled territory to the Palestinian territory, you better know which one you're going to and you better have your passport in order. It's uh, probably as peaceful as our Canadian border is, it's as far the opposite of that as, as it can be. So <clears throat> it's not the same territory, but even that territory, you remember, I think I was telling you in this class, is a third the size of Alabama. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's not big at all. Now, here's how it was uh, divided. Remember, when the Maccabees took over, it was under some of the people who followed Alexander the Great. Uh, by that time, it was the, um, the Seleucids, kind of Syrian people. And that shows you going from yellow to green to dark, you know, how they expanded and expanded and expanded. Those names we're not going to deal too much with because it's the, in between the Testaments period. But uh, you've got Jonathan, Simon, um, Hyrcanus, uh, Aristobulus I, and Alexander Janius. Those are the ones who expanded the territory and made a uh, separate kingdom of, of Israel, independent. Of, of the world empires. And that's the white part over there. So this was in their recent memory. The Romans came in and took over without saying that they had taken over in 63 BC. Now this one, do any of you still have my maps that look a little bit like that? Okay. First of all, to remind you, in case you haven't memorized the eastern half of the Roman Empire, <coughs> Uh, I know that these are not in common English. You might know what that country is. Oh, y'all are so smart. Italia. And what do we call this whole area? Uh, Greece. Greece, although it's as chopped up as it was then now. And we don't call this Asia. 
it's just the end of, the, of Turkey, they called Asia, and other countries. And notice that uh, Africa is kind of a nebulous term at that time. But Egypt, we know who Egypt is, and they're still the same place. So the people of Israel, or this is Judea, are this little bitty pink area. But it is a strategic location, extremely important to world history. Because you have the oldest empires were the Egyptians, right? Mm -hmm. If they wanted to expand, what, do you know what's beyond the Nile? It's all desert, right? Yep. So if you wanted to expand, you would go up this way where other people lived, or over this way where people lived. So to get there, you had to take this land bridge between the continents. Well, uh, what were we, we started with the uh, Egyptians. The next great empire is the Assyrians over here. All right, if they want to take over the whole world, they've got to come down to Egypt, the last great empire, and they've got to go over to what we call Europe. And again, they're going to have to go through this area to conquer the world. Then, when Greece takes over, if they want to get Egypt, they've got to come down this way. They're only fairly successful with, uh, with ships. And they've got to go this way. And then, and then Rome, then the Ottomans, you, to control the world because civilization goes back so far to Egypt and Mesopotamia. They're right in the, they're right in the path of every war and every empire. So, if you look up close over here, I want you to be able to locate on your map which one is Judea and their near neighbors. Also, Syria. Do you know what we call this area today? Um, Syria. Yeah. Uh, Do you know what the modern capital of Syria is? Damascus. You know what the capital was back then? Damascus. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's going to go for a wild guess there. Hmm? That'll be an easy one to remember. Yeah, I think so. All right, now Mesopotamia, we're not going to worry about too much. Notice how they spelled Babylonia. Now, Arabia is down here, and before people knew about oil, Arabia was not a significant player. It's a desert. Um, but what a desert now. Yeah. yeah. They, have, they have more money than I do. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so does a church mouse. All right, this one, it had its own name. Various nations controlled it. Don't worry too much about that. Do you know what this is? That's the Red Sea. That's the Red Sea with these two little branches up here, little mm -hmm. rabbit ears, I call them. So I want you to know that Judea was surrounded by Syria, Egypt, and then these lesser important uh, Arabia and various countries controlling the Sinai Peninsula. So what is, it's, what's that bottom word? Petch? Uh, Petraea, but you can just call it Petra if you want to. You know the, the town of Petra? You've oh, seen it? Yeah. it? It's in that area. Today this is Jordan up here, which includes Petra. But I just want you to know, the, when we talk about the Syrians and the Egyptians, mm -hmm. that's their history. Those were the people, and then you go beyond the Syrians over to the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Persians. That's who had been taking them over. So their sense of who they are, their identity, is a confusion of being the chosen people of God religiously. And their national identity, which, give them a break, their prophets had tied together to it. But God had a deeper meaning that they didn't get about being the people of God. They just wanted to be number one nation. Yeah, they wanted more the, the physical like the physical ruling rather than the spiritual. spiritual ruling. Unlike our country, where everybody is mainly interested in spiritual things. Where? <laughs> or in the Bible Belt. Oh, believe that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will give you this probably on a test someday, but I'll, I'll make it available to you online. All right, these are the political and ethnic regions of Palestine in the time of Jesus. We're going to do a unit probably Wednesday on geography. But tying together the geography and the people. Number three down here is Judea, which includes Jerusalem, which makes it the most important. Up from there, the green one at the top is Galilee. Jesus lived in Galilee. Is that one or A? One. A is a different area. 
Okay. Uh, Galilee swings around more on that side of the Sea of Galilee. Now, what I've given you is how they divided up Herod's territory after he died. So that A up there, now we're going to go kind of clockwise, A is the Tetrarchy of Philip. As I mentioned, he's, he's in the Bible, but he doesn't play an important role. Then you come down here, but you do see if Jesus lived up on the north of the Sea of Galilee, it was nothing for him to go across the river to, into Philip's territory, and he did. Now B is not under any of the Herods. There were 10 independent Greek cities, meaning when Alexander came, they established Greek cities, uh, called the Decapolis, but it's not ruled by any of Herod's people. Jesus does go there some. And then area two at the bottom is Perea, just a more geographical term than anything. As I said, Judea is three. Now, there's an ABC and a one, two, three for a reason. One, two, and three are geographic regions. A, B, and C are ethnic and political labels. So we already did the Tetrarchy of, of Philip and the Decapolis, but C, the reason it's got two tones there, is that it was really, according to the Romans, a part of Judea. But it was much more significant to the Jews of that day and to the Samaritans of that day that Samaria was a separate area. It was, uh, they didn't get along, but you know that from the Gospels. So this is now the difference. Okay, all I need you to do, the left-hand column, right above in the top line before they're in little before they broke up on the left to label the top the the left column label it r and label the second column j up there mm -hmm. yes Just right above it should have been divided but it, it didn't come out that way yeah. r and j mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. r is for rome and j is for judea, judea. so not everyone will get uh, classified. But I want you to skim through and say, do you think this was significant in Judea? In which case you'll put a J on it. Was it an involvement of Rome in Judea? Then you'll put an R and a J. You see, how often was the history of the reign of Herod, how often was it intertwined with Roman history? All right, so just go through that as quick as you can, and then we'll go over my version of it. Okay, now maybe I can find you something to do. So this Expect is the a lot significance. Of <laughs> Where, uh, to what extent was it mostly just significant in Judea? And the other one, the one you can put R and J, is when was Rome entangled with Judea? That's in a
Um, and by this time, you've got Julius Caesar coming to power. That gives you some sense of, of what's going on. Now on the right, by this time, Antipater has been given um, some considerable position. And he takes it upon himself to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Antipater came from the period where the Edomites, many centuries before, had been forced to take on Judaism. And so they, you know, they accepted it, but whether their hearts was in it, we don't know. They weren't ethnically Jewish. The Edomites, as you remember, are the very distant relatives, if you go all the way back to uh, to the early chapters of the Old Testament. All right, then this is, don't, I don't know why they threw Caesar into his name, but that gives you a, a point and he becomes involved. And here we are in 47 still. Now Antipater becomes a Roman citizen. Roman citizenship was much more important uh, than you might realize. If you had Roman citizenship, you and all your heirs would always have Roman citizenship. And you had certain rights, as we see in the life of the Apostle Paul, when he's about to be beaten, and he says, but I'm a Roman citizen, they can't do it. So this is a very high honor to be made a Roman citizen. Then he's given the uh, Roman position of procurator, and Hyrcanus is one of that uh, Hasmonean family, uh, who is the ethnarch. So Rome is using both the military leaders of the area and the religious leaders of the area to be their representatives. Um, Syria gives certain, I mean, Caesar gives certain cities to be added to the territory of Judea. Um, and then Phasael is Herod's brother, and he's appointed the governor of Jerusalem. Then he, Herod himself is appointed governor of Galilee because he's put down a certain rebellion. So we get up to 47. In those 10 years, he rises to power. Now, in the half minute we have left, we'll go over it more next time. All right, what's the next period? Who has the next period that comes 47, 46, something like that? Okay, how many times um, did you put that Rome was involved? Four, and there were a lot more than that on there. Okay. So there's some Roman involvement there. Okay. And what was the last year on yours? 42. So who's got the next one? Remember, we're going backwards in numbers. Oh, I okay. How many Roman involvements do you have? A lot. A lot? More than half? <laughs> yeah, because I did, or I did like they were both involved for a long time. Right, right. So. Are they any of them big? Like, give me well, one or two, um, that's a big deal. The birth of Alexander and Herod and... Um, right. Yeah. And, there, and his children are going to be educated in Rome. So, uh, yeah, there's some important things happening then. More and more entrenched with Rome. And how far did yours go? What year? To um, 37 32. So who's got the next one? Me. Okay. A lot of Rome or a little bit? A lot of Rome. Okay. Anything significant? Uh... Octavian confirms Herod king of Judea. That's a biggie. Mm -hmm. um, huh. find some others. Uh, Herod gets ill in Samaria, an mm -hmm. epidemic, ep epidemic. epidemic in Judea. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, let me just list like all the big ones. Yeah, or just some of them. Because we're, we're running out of time. Yours ended what year? Uh, 30, 24, sorry. 24, who's got the next one? Okay. Is there much of Rome in there? Uh, I mean, I put a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> what, what is Rome doing in Judea? So, well, where you said Rome in Judea. What are they doing at the time, yeah. Uh, well, I know Rome was like Alexander and Aristobulus. Aristobulus. Mm -hmm. uh, went to Rome for education. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, birth of uh, Antipas to Herod and Malthus. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Uh, and then Herod also started taking some territories and adding territories on right. um, to their stuff throughout, which I think that would have some small involvement. So it wasn't like the Judeans were saying, Herod, please be our ruler. It was right. all coming from Rome. And yours ended what year? Uh, 20. 
So who's next? I picked up an 18. That's good. Okay. Um, there was a ton of Rome. Mm -hmm. um, some of the significant ones is Herod remits taxes on return after the it's sabbatical like, year. Yeah. And so it's just like he's kind of taking power mm -hmm. in his area. But um, that has to do because like Rome put him into, into power. His, his power. And then, um, but sabbatical year is really a religious thing, so you know he's kind of yeah, stepping maybe in. Maybe it was more Judea. Yeah. yeah. I have no, a question. I'm Who's a Agri Agrippa? Agrippa. Yeah, I'm Agrippa. Yeah. Marcus yeah. Agrippa is a, an intimate of the emperor, and even became kind of almost co-emperor for a while. Yeah, he's in almost all these. Mm -hmm. And he was very close to Herod. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so he's visiting this a lot of them, he, It says a lot of times like this one's like Herod joins M. Agrippa's expedition to the Black Sea and Pontus. Mm -hmm. Um, Herod intercedes on behalf of Ilium with M. Agrippa, and like almost all of them have to do with M. Agrippa. So he's getting, you know, he's getting his toe in. He's getting in close to Marcus he's Agrippa. Getting to be buddies, right? Which is how you get power. Okay, and yours ended in what year? Uh, mine ended in fourteen. Are we up to you yet? Thirteen. Okay. Well, then it's so much. Um, there's a lot in there. Average, average. And um, we'll pick up with yours since I've run over time. But uh, the really interesting stuff is going to be as he gets older, Herod gets more and more paranoid. And he starts mm -hmm. killing relatives right and left. He sounds like... Um, like Stalin Hitler. or yeah, or Hitler or somebody. Yeah. yeah we're going to look at that. And remember, there's a point to this. We're going to finish up this history part next time in the first part of class. The point is, what did people think a king was? Well, somebody who knows how to manipulate and do underhanded things and keep power. We got that today. But what should a king be? There should only be one king, and it should be God who reigns through Jesus. And boy, is that different. And I think that's where we're going to go with the history. That's enough for today. Sounds we'll try to know more. Oh, on the assignment, do you want us to get that done before next class? If you can. Okay. I'll, I'll be patient with you through the week. Are you going to, when you're going to post the next assignment? Possibly today or tomorrow. Okay. Possibly. Got it. That means I'll get it done whenever you post. So. But you have a book? Yeah. Wow. Okay. It came in Friday, so I paid 30 bucks for shipping. I might. So I better have gotten it done next day. Oh, well, you all go get your books because I don't have to pay for the shipping. Huh?